Hi students, welcome to another English language lesson with Madam Gan. So today we are going to look at the SPM listening paper. First, let's look at the rules. Let's look at part one. Part one, there are seven questions. So you are going to listen to seven listening scripts or audios. So they are either monologue or dialogues. There are three options in the answers A, B and C. First of all, you need to identify the important words in the questions. So read the questions when the time is given for you to do so. Read the three options. And then after the first listening, identify the correct answers. And after the, lesson, the second listening, confirm or change your answers. Now let's look at part two. Part two, you have eight questions. So you need to listen carefully. Why? Because there is only one long listening script so only one script there are eight questions so still there are three options a b and c first of all identify the important words in the questions then read the three options after the first listening identify the correct answers and then during the second listening try to confirm whether that is the correct answer or you can change your answer next for part three Part 3, there are 5 questions. You have 5 listening scripts. There are 5 answers, but there are 7 sentences or options. So you see sentences A, B, C, D, E, F and G. Read the 7 sentences carefully. These sentences are actually paraphrased from the listening script. After the first listening, try to identify the correct sentence. Or the sentences and then after the sec second listening confirm or change your answer next for part four part four there are ten questions you're going to listen to one long listening script so fill in the blanks the ten blanks with only one word each the missing words remember they are only nouns so this is the latest information they're only nouns after the first listening, please identify the correct answers and then after you listen again, confirm or change your answers. Dear students, let's begin with part 1. Remember part 1, there are questions 1 to 7. This is the SPM listening test. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. You will hear people talking in seven different situations. For questions one to seven, choose the correct answer a, B or C. You will hear each recording twice. You now have 30 seconds to look at part 1. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. Question 1 You hear a girl talking about watching movies. I usually enjoy watching my favourite movies and cartoons on weekends. 
Action movies are good, but I'm not that keen if there's too much violence. I wouldn't waste any time on horror movies either. I'll have trouble sleeping after watching them. I guess I enjoy watching fantasy the most, where there's magical kingdoms and dragons. As for romance, well, I don't really enjoy that. Now listen again. I usually enjoy watching my favorite movies and cartoons on weekends. Action movies are good, but I'm not that keen if there's too much violence. I wouldn't waste any time on horror movies either. I'll have trouble sleeping after watching them. I guess I enjoy watching fantasy the most, where there's magical kingdoms and dragons. As for romance, well, I don't really enjoy that. Now, let's look at how you answer this question. The question is, the girl likes movies which, so you have three options, A, have lots of fight scenes, B, are shown on weekends, C, let her use her imagination. So in the script, when you listen, you will hear this sentence, I guess I enjoy watching fantasy the most. So the most means she loves watching fantasy the most, okay, or she prefer fantasy compared to the other types of or genres of movies. So and the sentence, I guess I enjoy watching fantasy the most where there are magical kingdoms and dragons. So here the best answer will be the girl likes movies which let her use her imagination. So the answer is C. Question 2. Now for question 2. When did the man realize he could turn his hobby into his job? There are three options. A. When he was in Africa. B. When traveling all over the world. C. When magazines started publishing his work. So in the audio, you will listen to these sentences. In my 20s, I saved enough money working as a salesman to travel to Africa. While I was there, I took lots of great pictures and that's what. So that's what means is referring to when he was in Africa and he took a lot of pictures. And that's what made me think of a career in photography. So definitely the answer is A. When did the man realize he could turn his hobby into his job? Answer is when he was in Africa.
Dear students, now for question 3. The student loves sports because A. She enjoys competing B. It teaches her to use her time well C. It suits her sociable personality So in the script, there is this sentence I do sport mainly So mainly is the most important reason I do sport mainly for building friendship So the answer is When you want to build friendship You are a sociable person Or you are an extrovert so the answer is, the student loves sports because it suits her sociable personality. So the answer is C. Question 4. You hear a science teacher giving instructions to the students. Okay, listen class. I know you've heard this many times, but I still need to remind you about a few important matters. Be cautious when in the laboratory. Always read the label carefully when using chemicals. Inform your teacher immediately if you spill any chemicals. Always wash your hands when you leave the laboratory. And, above all, you must follow the instructions given at all times. Now listen again. Okay, listen class. I know you've heard this many times, but I still need to remind you about a few important matters. Be cautious when in the laboratory. Always read the label carefully when using chemicals. Inform your teacher immediately if you spill any chemicals. Always wash your hands when you leave the laboratory. And, above all, you must follow the instructions given at all times. Now for question 4. What does the science teacher say is most important? Options A. Reading labels properly B. Listening carefully to all instructions C. Washing hands when you leave the laboratory So in the script, there is this sentence And above all So above all here means the most important And above all, you must follow the instructions given at all times So the answer is B Question Dear students, now for number 5. According to the news reader, people should A. Stay indoor right now B. Expect bad weather at the weekend and C. Make the most of the weather tomorrow So in the script, the sentence goes Although we are experiencing rain, some rain today So today, okay, today is now So when you have rain now, it's definitely A Stay indoor right now So C could be a distractor Because it's uh, when you look at the script It's written here Although we are experiencing rain today Sunday So Sunday here Doesn't mean that it is tomorrow So C here actually is a distractor Because you may think it is the correct answer Because C here Make the most of the weather tomorrow And in the script Or in audio Sunday is a good day so you think Sunday is tomorrow, but actually Sunday is not mentioned that it is tomorrow. The most important thing you see here will be the today. So you have the word in the option A, now. So according to the newsreader, people should stay indoor right now. Why? Because it is raining. So the answer is A. Question.
Dear students, question 6. What does the woman say about the restaurant? So in the script, there is this sentence. Another good thing was that the tables had a good amount of space between them. So here, the tables and the space, they are referring to the layout. So the answer is B. The layout was suitable. Question 7. What was not a challenge for Ali? So not a challenge. A. The route B. Reaching the top C. Changing weather. So in the audio, you will listen to this sentence. Well, the route up Mount Everest is not difficult. So here it is not difficult. So the answer is definitely A. Dear students, now we are going to move on to part Two. Part 2, there are 8 questions. So you have questions 8 to 15.
Balancing is everything when you ride a skateboard. You have to learn how to bend your knees properly and move your weight around the deck. Dear students, for question 8, what is the most important aspect of skateboarding according to Roy? So options, bending your knees, balancing your body is B, and then C is moving your weight around. So in the script, there is this sentence, balancing is everything. So everything is the most important. So balancing is everything when you learn to skateboard. So look at the word everything. So the answer is B, balancing your body. I remember the first time I saw a pro skateboarder. He came to our new skate park and put on a demo. When I saw him zoom up and down the ramp, I knew I wanted to do that too. Dear students, for question 9, when did Roy decide to be a skateboarder? A. Seeing the happiness on the skateboarder's face. B. After meeting a pro skateboarder for the first time. And C. Watching a skateboarder showing some of his skills. And in the audio or the script, there are these sentences. The first, I remember the first time I saw a pro skateboarder. He came to my new skate park and put on a demo. A demo is a demonstration. So this pro skateboarder did some acts. When I saw him, he zoomed up and down the ramp. I knew I wanted to do that too. Okay, so when you are zooming up and down, it means that you are showing your skills. So the answer is C. I watched as he got ready to do a trick. And when it worked out, I could see the pleasure spread across his face. We all cheered, including the parents and the little kids. But I think I cheered the loudest. When it was over, he threw things to us. Caps, t-shirts, wheels, shoes, and even a skateboard with his name on it. I caught a t-shirt and I wear it nearly every day. It's my lucky shirt. Now for question 10. Why is Roy fond of the t-shirt he got? A. It has the pro skater name on it. B. It didn't cost him anything. And C. It brings him success. So the, in the audio, I caught a t-shirt. So it means that he managed to catch a t-shirt which was thrown by the pro skater. And I wear it nearly every day. It's my lucky shirt. So when it is a lucky shirt, it's the, it definitely brings Roy success. So answer will be, it brings him success. Answer is C. Good. Dear students, now let's look at question 11. Why does Roy prefer skateboarding to team sports? The options A. He feels completely comfort, uh, responsible for his own success or failure. B. He thinks that individual sports are more challenging. And C. He becomes more competitive when skateboarding. So in the audio, there are these sentences. You do it all yourself. If you crash, it's because you do something wrong. If you make a great trick work, it's because you try hard and do your best. So the answer is A, because he feels res completely responsible for his own success or failure. Here, success will be you make a great trick work. And failure here, if you crash, it, because, it is because you did something wrong. So the answer is definitely A. When I first started, I used my cruiser skateboard. Now I ride my double kick skateboard more often because I'm learning to do more tricks. Dear students, now for question 12. Which skateboard does Roy use the most? So the answer, the options A, Malibu, Bot, B, Double Kick and C, Cruiser. So these are the names of skateboard. In the script or in the audio, you can listen to this sentence. Now I ride my double kick more often, so more often here is referring to the most. It is because I'm learning to do more tricks. So the answer is definitely 
What is it? It's double kick. So the answer is B. I also write the Malibu board when I want to feel the wind in my face. I can get up a pretty good speed on it. When I go really fast, the excitement makes my heart beat faster. I feel great. Even though I'm a bit afraid, I might crash if I don't get the turn right. Dear students, next question, 13. Roy loves the skateboard that travels quickly as... Options, it was his first skateboard. It helps him improve his skills. It gives him a trailing sensation. So, he loves the skateboard that travels quickly. When you listen to audio, there is this sentence. When I go really fast, the excitement makes my heart beat faster. So there is a trill. Okay, so it gives him a trilling sensation. So the answer is C. The council has just built a new skate park and there are two ramps we can practice on. The big ramp is made of plywood and I think it's better than concrete or steel. We all fall off sometimes, but if you fall on the concrete, it takes lots of skin off, even through your clothes. The steel one looks smooth and shiny, and that's the trouble with them. Your wheels don't grip as well on the steel ramps, and too many riders fall. I have more control over the plywood ramp. Dear students, question 14. Why does Roy prefer skating on a plywood ramp? In this audio, when you listen, you know that there are three types of ramps. First, you have the plywood ramp, you have the concrete ramp, and also the steel ramp. So the options A, it, look good. it looks good. So plywood ramp looks good. B, plywood ramp is it is smooth. And three, plywood ramp is referred as it is safer. Okay, so is it correct? So in the audio or in the script, but if you fall on the concrete, it takes lots of skin off. So injury means your skin is uh, torn or you can have cuts on your skin. Okay, even through your clothes, it means your clothes could be torn and then when your skin is exposed, you will also damage your skin. So there is a bad thing about concrete ramp. The steel one. Okay, now we are talking about the steel ramp. Looks smooth and shiny. And that's the trouble with them. So trouble means the problem with steel ramp. Your wheels don't grip. Okay, so the wheels on your skateboard, they don't grip on the steel ramp. Okay, the wheels don't grip as well on the steel ramps and too many riders fall. Okay, so riders fall when they use the steel ramp. So definitely, why does Roy prefer skating on a plywood ramp? The answer is, it is safer. Answer is C. Ramps. Now I spend most of my time on my trick board, which is the double kick. I did my first ollie on it. And ollie was a special trick I learned. I smash kick down on the back of my board and slide my foot forward. Then, with my arms outstretched, I'm in the air. It only lasts for a split second, but it feels like I'm flying. When I land flat and keep going, I can still feel the thrill. That's why I keep trying new tricks. It's a sense of achievement, even though it takes a lot of hard work. Now, students, the last question for part two. Question 15. Roy tries doing new tricks with his skateboard because A. He likes the assignment. B. He can fly in the air and C. He is good at it. So here remember, there are some distractors or answers which you think are correct but actually they are wrong. Okay, in the audio. Now I spend most of my time on my trick board which is the double kick. I did my first ollie on it. So you'll be thinking what is an ollie? Okay, and Ollie was a special trick I learned. I smash kick down on the back of my board and slide my foot forward. Then with my arms outstretched, I'm in the air. It only lasts a split second, but it feels like I'm flying. So many of you will think that the answer is Roy does tries doing new tricks on his board, skateboard because he can fly in the air. 
Okay, so this is not the answer because when you read the next sentence or when you listen, when I land flat and keep going, I can still feel the thrill. That's why I keep trying new tricks. So the answer here, I can still feel the thrill. So thrill here is referring to the excitement. So answer is definitely A. Roy tries doing new tricks with his skateboard because he likes the excitement. Dear students, now we are looking at part 3. So part 3 questions are 16 to 20. 2. Let's look at the first speaker. In the script, the first speaker says, I ask myself why I need it, where I'll put it and what it's for. So the answer is definitely D. Ask yourself is if an item is really necessary. Because here you're asking questions. Why I need it, where I'll put it and what it's for. Answer is D. Speaker 2. At supermarkets, there are always people trying to sell you things. I normally compare prices of different brands to get the best deal. Sometimes, I use vouchers that I find on the internet or in newspapers. I like to go online to know who is offering the lowest price. Students, now for the next speaker, Speaker 2. In the script, Speaker 2 says, at supermarkets, there are always people trying to sell you things. I normally compare prices of different brands to get the best deal. So the answer is A, because always look for the best bargain. So here it is related to, I normally compare prices of different brands to get the best deal. Speaker 3 at the supermarket, I only buy what I've planned to get. This means that I won't be tempted to add some ice cream even if it looks really good. It doesn't matter how good it looks. If you haven't planned to buy it, don't put it in your basket. Now for speaker 3. When you listen to the audio, the speaker says, At the supermarket, I only buy what I plan to get. Okay, so you plan only then you buy. So definitely the answer is E. Be careful not to buy on impulse. Speaker 4. Now let's look at question for speaker 4. Speaker 4 says, we find ourselves attracted to these discounts and end up buying things that we don't really need. So, attracted to these discounts is referring to don't fall for marketing tricks. The answer is G.
Now let's look at speaker 5. In the audio, speaker 5 says, When I'm thinking about buying something and I am in the shop trying to consider my options, I always avoid the sales assistance. Okay, their job is trying to persuade you to buy the product. So the answer is C. Why? Because here, don't let others make your mind up for you. So don't let others. So who are others? Definitely, they are the sales assistants. Okay, make up your mind means persuade you to do or to buy the product. The answer is C. Dear students, the last part is part 4. So part 4, questions 21 to 30. Now turn to part 4. You will hear a student, Aslan, talking about his experience as an exchange student in Italy. For questions 21 to 30, fill in the missing information in each numbered space. Use no more than one word for each space. You now have one minute to look at part four. So Aslan, You've just returned from an exchange program in Italy. How was it? It was amazing. It was one of the greatest trips of my life. How did you know about this program? It all started when my teacher announced that there would be a student exchange program. We could choose to go either to Italy or France. In the past, I had always ignored these programs, but for some reason this year it caught my attention. So, did you apply straight away? I think my biggest concern was that I had a limited budget, but I didn't let that stop me. I went ahead with the application and it was successful. My parents were a bit worried about how I would handle life away from home, of course. I'd never travelled that far before, so I had to buy a new suitcase. So, tell me more about your trip. What was it like when you got there? In Rome, once we'd arrived, it was nice to be able to relax and walk around the city in the evening after the long flight. I noticed that the Italians do things differently. Their culture isn't the same as ours. They truly know how to relax and enjoy themselves. What else did you learn about the people there? I was impressed by how friendly and polite the people were. My host family introduced me to their friends and family members. Every gathering was a feast of food and laughter. When they discovered that I was a die-hard fan of their famous football club, they organized a trip to the local stadium. It was amazing! Wow! Do you get to meet any of the players? Well, we managed to watch the team train. And later, I got a really great photo of me with the team captain because my host father knew the players would usually hang out at a nearby restaurant after training. So, we tried our luck. And I couldn't believe it when I saw the team walking in. They were happy for me to take a few shots with them. So, did you stay in Rome for the whole trip then? No. The school I was placed in organized a trip to Milan as well. It was there that I discovered what real pizza actually tasted like. It's better than anything you'll ever get back home in Malaysia. We went on a walk in the countryside one afternoon too. It was so green and beautiful, and the weather was fantastic. We didn't have much time to go sightseeing, though, unfortunately. Was the school trip to Milan organised in the same way as school trips are here in Malaysia? Yes, except the organiser had one rule we all had to follow. We were not allowed to use our digital devices, so I had to leave my phone off the whole time. I was quite annoyed about this, but they did allow us to take a camera at least. I was able to get some really lovely pictures. Sounds like it was quite strict. Did you get any nice souvenirs while you were there? Well, we didn't have much time in Milan, but I did get a couple of things. I got a really beautiful silk scarf in a street market. That was for my mother. I also got a designer shirt for my father. He never buys any new clothes. 
Sounds nice. Was school life very different from here in Malaysia then? Well, the first thing that struck me was that the students have a very different method of learning. It was quite informal in some ways, especially when compared to some Malaysian schools. I'm not sure which one is better though. What do you think you learned from this student exchange program? I think I developed a lot as a person. I don't think it helped me in my studies, but it was useful to learn another language. I think the biggest thing I took from the experience was that it has made me rethink my goals in life. For example, am I sure I want to go to this university or that one? What do I really want to do next with my life? Would you visit Italy again? Of course, but for now, I'm looking forward to my host family's visit. It'll be my turn to show them around Malaysia. That's happening in September, when we all have enough free time. I've kept in touch with them since arriving back last April. They had planned to visit earlier in the year, but I was really busy in August. Now listen again. So Aslan, you've just returned from an exchange program in Italy. How was it? It was amazing. It was one of the greatest trips of my life. How did you know about this program? It all started when my teacher announced that there would be a student exchange program. We could choose to go either to Italy or France. In the past, I had always ignored these programs, but for some reason this year it caught my attention. So did you apply straight away? I think my biggest concern was that I had a limited budget, but I didn't let that stop me. I went ahead with the application and it was successful. My parents were a bit worried about how I would handle life away from home, of course. I'd never traveled that far before, so I had to buy a new suitcase. So, tell me more about your trip. What was it like when you got there? In Rome, once we'd arrived, it was nice to be able to relax and walk around the city in the evening after the long flight. I noticed that the Italians do things differently. Their culture isn't the same as ours. They truly know how to relax and enjoy themselves. What else did you learn about the people there? I was impressed by how friendly and polite the people were. My host family introduced me to their friends and family members. Every gathering was a feast of food and laughter. When they discovered that I was a die-hard fan of their famous football club, they organized a trip to the local stadium. It was amazing! Wow! Did you get to meet any of the players? Well, we managed to watch the team train. And later, I got a really great photo of me with the team captain because my host father knew the players would usually hang out at a nearby restaurant after training. So, we tried our luck. And I couldn't believe it when I saw the team walking in. They were happy for me to take a few shots with them. So, did you stay in Rome for the whole trip then? No. The school I was placed in organized a trip to Milan as well. It was there that I discovered what real pizza actually tasted like. It's better than anything you'll ever get back home in Malaysia. We went on a walk in the countryside one afternoon too. It was so green and beautiful and the weather was fantastic. We didn't have much time to go sightseeing though, unfortunately. Was the school trip to Milan organized in the same way as school trips are here in Malaysia? Yes, except the organizer had one rule we all had to follow. We were not allowed to use our digital devices, so I had to leave my phone off the whole time. I was quite annoyed about this, but they did allow us to take a camera at least. I was able to get some really lovely pictures. Sounds like it was quite strict. Did you get any nice souvenirs while you were there? Well, we didn't have much time in Milan, but I did get a couple of things. I got a really beautiful silk scarf in a street market. That was for my mother. I also got a designer shirt for my father. He never buys any new clothes. Sounds nice. Was school life very different from here in Malaysia then? Well, the first thing that struck me was that the students have a very different method of learning. It was quite informal in some ways, especially when compared to some Malaysian schools. 
I'm not sure which one is better, though. What do you think you learned from the student exchange program? I think I developed a lot as a person. I don't think it helped me in my studies, but it was useful to learn another language. I think the biggest thing I took from the experience was that it has made me rethink my goals in life. For example, am I sure I want to go to this university or that one? What do I really want to do next with my life? Would you visit Italy again? Of course, but for now, I'm looking forward to my host family's visit. It'll be my turn to show them around Malaysia. That's happening in September when we all have enough free time. I've kept in touch with them since arriving back last April. Dear students, remember earlier I mentioned to you that all the answers are nouns. So let's look at the answers. Number 21, budget. Number 22, culture. Number 23, stadium. 24, restaurant. 25, countryside. 26, phone. 27, scarf. 28, one. So remember here for one, you have to spell the word one and not write the number. Okay. And 29, goes. And 30, September with a uppercase or capital letter for S. Dear students, let's try to go through the answers for questions 21 and uh, until 30. So here, remember, I reminded you with the latest information that all the blanks, okay, for the answers, remember, you can only write one word and all of them are nouns. So here, let's look at number one, his budget. So budget is a noun and then you have a different, different is an adjective, so you have culture and then you have Nearby, a uh, nearby, nearby is also an adjective to say that it's near you and the noun is stadium. For the 30, for 24, it is a, uh, so a uh, restaurant, another noun. For 25, the answer is in the countryside, so countryside is a noun. Next one, 28, he couldn't use his, so here his phone, so phone is a noun. And 27, Aslan bought his mother an attractive, so 27, an attractive, attractive is an adjective, so you have scarf. Okay, next, 28. Aslan says that there is a difference between the Italian and Malaysian schools approach to learning, but not sure which, so the answer is a noun, which one is better. And 29. Aslan reconsiders his, so his goals, so goals, it is also a noun. Okay, the last one, Aslan con reconsiders his goals, 29 is a noun, after being on the exchange program. So, next one, the last one, 30, Aslan's Italian host family is planning to visit Malaysia next. So, this is maybe next year, next month. So the answer here is next September. And remember for the word September, it is a proper noun. Remember to spell with a capital S or an uppercase. Okay, so that is the last part. Remember all the blanks, the answers are nouns. Dear students, we have completed our discussion for SPM listening paper. I hope that this video will really help you to answer the listening paper, which is on the 21st of February 2022. So best of luck, try your best, and you can do it. Bye-bye.